says there's been a breakthrough in the negotiations between Hamas and Israel for a ceasefire deal and the release of Israeli captives. Our correspondent, Mohammed Jamjun, joins me now in the studio. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for joining me. Let's begin with the basics of what we know. This is, of course, a breaking news situation. But what we've heard from a senior official in the U.S., that there's been a breakthrough on critical matters in the Israel-Hamas talks. How yeah. significant is this? So, Jessica, this seems on its face to be rather significant, the fact that there is all of a sudden this burst of what appears to be momentum when so many times in the past we've heard that things might be close, but the tones have been much more measured when it came to the sort of level of cautious optimism. Right now, we seem to be hearing from the U.S. that they do believe that they could be on the precipice of a major breakthrough, but we have to warn, we have been close to this point before, many times in the last several months, where it seemed as though perhaps both sides had bridged one of the main sticking points. Now, right now, what we know is happening is that there is going to be an Israeli delegation coming to Qatar to be discussing the proposal that they've gotten from Hamas with the mediators. Also, we're told that the U.S. is going to be sending a delegation as well to Qatar to be involved in these negotiations. That all is very encouraging. And what seems to have spurred all this is the fact that Hamas gave a new proposal in the past 24 hours to the Israelis that has been studied. What we're seeing across the Israeli media landscape is it seems that there are a lot of Israeli officials that believe that Hamas is being more flexible than they had been in the past. And so right now, people are encouraged. But again, we're not at the point yet where we can say that there is any big major breakthrough as of yet. And if we talk about what is being said from the Israeli negotiating team, according, according to sources that have spoken with media, the proposal put forward by Hamas includes a very significant breakthrough. That's according to that source. What might that breakthrough be? Well, this is going to be key to find out what exactly it is, because the reports in Israel are indicating or suggesting rather that perhaps Hamas has softened their stance. Perhaps Perhaps they have made the language in their proposable, in proposal more amenable to the Israeli side. Um, that's going to be interesting to see what exactly is in the proposal, what we will hear from Hamas going forward. Because in the past, the main sticking point has been the language about if there's going to be a permanent ceasefire or not, because the Israelis have maintained that they are not going to enter into any kind of permanent ceasefire, that they are going to continue to prosecute the war until Hamas is completely destroyed. Whereas Hamas has said that they will not enter into any kind of temporary ceasefire unless that actually leads to a permanent ceasefire. The Americans in the past couple of months have continued to say that they have tried to reach a kind of a language in this proposal that would satisfy both sides. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see what perhaps they have reached at this point. But one of the more difficult things is going to be is even if this is acceptable to Israeli negotiators, is it going to be acceptable to the Israeli prime minister? Benjamin Netanyahu has oftentimes in the past um, felt a lot of pressure from his far right wing flank, from uh, far right wing ministers like uh, Itmar Ben Gavir, the national security minister, Bezalel Smotrich, the finance minister, who have continued to say that if Israel were to enter into any kind of a permanent ceasefire, were to end the war, then that would mean that they would withdraw from government and that would collapse the coalition. And that would mean that Israel would be heading to elections. And many people in Israel believe, I've been there many times in the past year before we were banned from reporting there, many in Israel believe that Netanyahu is not willing to completely end the war because he believes that that is what his political survival relies upon going forward. Right. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for joining me in the studio. I'm sure we'll be speaking to you about this breaking news situation. Make sure to subscribe our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.